Hi, this is Jason Molesky. In this example, we'll review how to tell whether or not a random variable fits a binomial setting. Genetics says that children receive genes from each of their parents independently. Each child of a particular set of parents has a probability of 0.25 of having type O blood. Suppose these parents have five children. Let's let X equal the number of children with type O blood. To see whether or not this fits a binomial setting, we'll need to check our bins, B-I-N-S. We'll start with whether or not we have a binary situation. Well, if we define success as having a type O blood and defining failure as not having a type O blood, we can see that we do have uh, two possible outcomes, so we do have a, binomial, or a binary situation. Independent. Well, knowing one child's blood type tells you nothing about another's because the children inherit genes determining blood type independently from each of their parents. That was stated to us, so we do know that our independent requirement is met. For the number, we note there are n equals 5 trials of this chance process. We have a fixed number in each case, so that uh, requirement is met. And finally, for success, we note the probability of a success is 0.25 for each trial. So our bins, B, I, N, S, are met, and we can state this is a binomial setting. Since X counts the number of successes, it's a binomial random variable with parameters N equal 5 and P equals 0.25. In the next setting, let's suppose we shuffle a deck of cards. Then we turn over the first 10 cards one at a time and let Y equal the number of aces we observe. Well, let's take a look at the bins here. For binary, we note success could be defined as getting an ace and failure is not getting an ace, so we do have two outcomes. For independence, though, we note that no, we don't have independence because if the first card you turn over is an ace, then the next card will be less likely to be an ace because you're not replacing the top card in the deck. Similarly, if the first card isn't an ace, the second card is actually like, uh, more likely to be an ace, so we don't have independence met. Therefore, we know that because the trials are not independent, this is not a binomial setting. We don't even need to check the last two uh, because we've already violated one of our requirements. Now let's suppose we shuffle a deck of cards, turn over the top card, then put the card back in the deck and shuffle again. And then we keep repeating this process until we get an ace. Here let's let our random vari variable w represent the number of cards that are required until we get that ace. Well, for our bins, we note again, we have success of getting an ace or failure not getting an ace, so we, our binary requirement is met. Here we do have independence because we're replacing the card in the deck and shuffling each time. Therefore, the result of one trial doesn't tell you anything about the outcome of any other trial. Our success of getting, or our probability of success getting an ace is the same on every single trial. For the number, though, we note the number of trials is not set in advance. We're not saying how many aces do we get when we deal 10 cards or 15 cards. We're just saying how long is it going to take until we get an ace. We could get an ace on the first card we turn over, or it might take many cards to get an ace. So therefore, our number requirement is violated. Note, though, the probability, as we indicated, of getting an ace is 4 out of 52 on any trial. So that is met. However, because number is not met, we violate that requirement, and it is not a binomial setting. For some additional practice with binomial settings and random variables, try exercises 69 and 71.